Good morning, everybody, and welcome back to the channel. I am Amalgamash, and today I wanted to take a look at the camera registration tool included with RPG Developer Bakin. The tool is located under the master menu once you have opened your game and you are in the map editor. Clicking on it immediately takes you to a new screen where you can see the camera preview in the center window. Now, just a note on the UI, I am in a 4K resolution, and this is an early access build of RPG Developer Bakin, so the appearance of the UI is subject to change at any time. And if you are using a 1080p resolution, your screen may look different. So like all other Bakin menus, you can see that the screen is separated into several different sections. The left section, which we'll take a look at now, has camera list, which is where we can access our cameras and create new cameras. We also have access to a folder structure here for sortation. You can add new cameras, copy and paste existing cameras to use as templates, and also delete cameras. You can also search for cameras. And just like many other Bakin menus, we have access to management tags and notes in order to better describe the camera that we create, as well as give them sortation properties. So we have three categories right away, and the top one is called default. This is where you would actually edit the default camera for your game. I created this map using just a few default assets and the automatic map generator. Just to give an idea on how this would look, you can actually move your character around in this screen, even though we are in the editor, to give a better idea about how this will look once we are playing the game. Pretty cool, we can actually move around the map in the camera preview. View. You can use the scroll wheel on your mouse to zoom in and out, and you can drag with the right mouse button to change the pitch and yaw angles of the camera. So I'm kind of happy with this angle, so I'll stop editing the camera placement here. Top of the center section of the screen, you can see under camera preview a button that allows you to load from presets. So you can always get a really quick default third person view, first person view, or side view. We'll need to use the scroll wheel to zoom out a bit for this side view because I didn't make a game that was appropriate for this camera angle, but it it does show you that you can very quickly get your camera positioned for a side-scrolling game, which RPG Developer Bakin does allow you to make. Here's that particular camera from the opposite side, and I'll just continue moving my sprite around so we can get some different viewpoints of this map. When I click first person, it looks like we're right up on our sprite, but we can also continue zooming in and out with our scroll wheel to get through that. And now I believe I have true first person view. All we had to do was scroll right in. So achieving first person view is not going to be an issue in RPG Developer Bakin at all. All right, in the upper right hand corner, we we have the switch maps for preview button, the edit rendering settings button, and we can turn on post effects. Now I didn't set anything up here, so anything that you're seeing was going to be here by default. We can edit our rendering settings right here in the camera tool. We actually stay in this screen. We just get a new sort of section added and we can click on nightfall, night, indoor daytime, indoor evening, indoor night, scorching sun, darkness. That looks really cool in first person underworld. And it's at this point, I might go ahead and switch back to third person, which you can also do just by controlling the camera and moving it out, the scroll wheel, and changing its angle. I love how this looks. Lava zone, ice world daytime, ice world evening, ice world night, sepia tone, good for flashback scenes, I suppose. Bad weather. We don't have any weather effects or particles going on, so this is just the bad weather for the ambiance and the lighting. Bad weather at night, dungeon one, we see some limb darkening, this preset, dungeon two, and dungeon three, summer weather. This would probably look really good with a beach setting and a sunny skybox. Fancied sky, day, fancied sky night, milky way, full moon. I actually do get the vibe that there's a full moon out with this. That's really nice. Cloudy sky day and cloudy sky night. Something called barrier, daytime, barrier night, and barrier underworld. This looks awesome. Blue sky, tutorial morning, tutorial daytime, tutorial evening, tutorial night, tutorial UV number, ep1 daytime, ep1 evening, ep1 cloudy. I do get the sense that it's cloudy. I really like how that looks. And something called monotone. Now we can take this part of the screen and resize it so that we have access to being able to copy, paste, and delete these presets. But I'm going to turn off the post effects and the rendering settings for this map. Actually, it's a little bit brighter with the post effects on. I'll keep these post effects on. And we'll look at the right side of the screen and the options that it provides. For basic settings, we can specify whether to use other camera. Note that all camera work information being edited will be deleted once the new setting has been applied. You can turn on use loop, loop playback of camera work. We'll 
we'll explain what that is in just a moment. And of course, we can change the parameters of the camera itself. I've covered these sort of properties in other videos, uh, but you can see how they kind of change as we change the angle of camera. Angle of view is set to 10. And as we change this, we see that it kind of emulates the size of the lens being used. So it may be more appropriately named field of view. We have near clip, which will actually determine how close the camera needs to be before it begins to clip into the environment. Position X, Y, and Z are the things that are moving around as well as angle X and Y whenever you change the position of the camera. In SGB, we had to take these values and display them on the screen to see the exact position of the camera so that we could write those values down and then transfer them to an event to get that exact angle on a map. At least that's how I did it, but it looks like this time around we'll be able to just take camera itself and copy it and paste it wherever we need that camera setting for a given map. So this saves a ton of time for those of you who like to work with the cameras. Another set of options under gazing target, we can specify the target being the player, none or world coordinates or the center of the map. And if we choose center of map and move our player around in the preview, we can see that it indeed stays right where it's at static placement in the map and our player does not get to control the camera then. So really, really good for classic survival horrors or other camera position type games, maybe even a Legend of Zelda like. We can also change the offset of this camera, the X, Y, and Z position values, as well as something called spline interpolation, which is explained by the tooltip that pops up. It says when spline interpolation is turned on, the camera movement between frames becomes smoother. So I'm interested to see how that will affect the final output. We can also change the camera's constant speed to ease in, ease out, ease in 3x or 3x out, decelerating strongly or accelerating strongly. Really interested to see how this will look on the map. So we'll keep these settings, but we will look at the last section of settings. And these are the light source settings. We can change the bloom intensity coefficient, the light intensity coefficient, the chromatic aberration, the depth of field focal coefficient, depth of field range coefficient, and depth of field blur radius. All right, so leaving our camera settings as they are for the default camera, let's look at the bottom of the center section of the screen under timeline, and we can actually add frames. This means that you can create animated cameras. And this is what really makes this tool special. You can basically have drone shots, and that is what the use loop option is for. You can actually have the camera loop in its animation. All right, I'm test playing the camera loop that I just made, and I definitely did something wrong there. Right, let's try that again, but let's set the frame numbers to 100 on all accounts. I've also got all of these spline interpolations turned on, and I have ease in selected for every single one of my camera frames. Now, when I test play my game, you can see that the camera smoothly moves around my character. And this is more or less what I intended to happen. This is a pretty extreme example. I don't think that anybody's going to do this exactly, although it does kind of look like a monster could be jumping from treetop to treetop, stalking my character as she takes a walk through the woods. Unfortunately, in this situation, the controls do not update depending on where the camera is. So when it's right about here and I push the up key, my character moves down towards the camera. So everything gets reversed. Not very intuitive, but this extreme example does serve to show what kind of power you're in control of and how much control Bakin lets you have over placing cameras and automating them in your maps. We can just as easily go back to the camera registration tool and delete all of those frames and now take a quick look at some of the other presets that we have. We've got a whole folder for battle cameras. Here's the start camera and we can change where that position is exactly for this map. It's worth noting that whenever you check this out, you'll have a default sort of sprinkling of enemies that get placed in the map for you to check and see how the battles will look. And here's our standby our attack camera, use skill and use item cameras, and the results camera. This is the one that appears whenever your character wins. So it gets centered on your character doing their win pose. Yay! And then you can actually specify individual camera settings per map. So this camera is map one. It's the default camera for this specific map. Adding new cameras to this list is easy. You can immediately add new and specify its name as well as whatever management tags and notes you'd like it to have. And that's right here in the list. It gets a slightly different icon for user created versus system. That way you know which ones are default and you can go right back on to editing. All of the information for each of your camera frames will be right here in the info. And when you click on the frame, you'll be able to see its specific parameters on the right side of the screen. And that about covers everything for the camera registration tool. I wasn't sure what kind of tool this was going to be, but I can really see the potential and see how this is going to be used to create some awesome scenes. That's it. I thank you very much for watching and please stay tuned for more Bakking tutorials right here on the channel. Bye for now.